There are so many different options. From point and shoot to DSLR and mirrorless camera, then it can be quite overwhelming to choose from one. This is why I made this guide to avoid you falling into those traps and choosing the perfect camera. Okay, so are we ready? Let's dive in. Hi, I am Maxime Cheminade and I am an award-winning underwater photographer, filmmaker, and this is my YouTube channel. There are a few things to consider before buying a camera for underwater use. One of the big decisions you're gonna have to make is of course your budget. Underwater photography is expensive and especially with the housing. So think about it a little bit before investing everything in the camera and the lens and then not having budget for the housing. Don't break the bank, as remember, we are putting this camera in a hostile environment and flooding is always something that could happen, but should not. What makes a camera good for a beginner? Um, I think as a beginner, what you want is to have something that isn't too big, uh, that isn't too expensive, uh, because you're most probably gonna scratch it. Um, you might most probably don't want to hold the camera during the entire dive in front of you and taking pictures for one, one hour, one and a half hour. And you want something that isn't too big also because um, it, it is really hard to dive, uh, maintain buoyancy and at the same time um, having a massive camera in front of you. So big recommendation is go small. Intermediate, um, what makes a great intermediate camera? Um, I would say it's for some the, for the diver that have, that have already a lot of experience with a camera or while diving knows that they really want to go to, some, to do some specific macro or wide angle. Uh, they basically want more than the, than the beginners. And they are not afraid of a bigger camera. Uh, they are ready to travel with it, but they are not committed yet to having a camera that is taking an entire backpack when you travel. Um, the experts, um, what makes a great expert camera? I would say it's possibilities, uh, options, features, and uh, the no compromise image quality. Um, this is what where where everything uh, is at its best. And um, with those cameras, you basically the from the autofocus to the video codec format that you can record to the colors to the image quality to the battery life. Everything is. Uh, as good as it gets, basically. This is the top of the line camera and they are there to help you produce the most, the, the best images that you can have. For the beginner tier, I choose the AX100 from Sony, the Olympus TG series, the Canon J7X. In our intermediate section, we are gonna find a Sony A6000 series, the Lumix GH5, and on our expert, we would have the Sony A7S series, the Canon R5. Okay, so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit more about all of the cameras we've seen. I have tested or even own a big part of the camera that I'm recommending you today. So that's why it's a bit more easy for me to speak about them. Uh, first recommendation, the Sony AX100. This is an amazing uh, starting camera for both photos and videos. Uh, it is also the most expensive of the three, um, but it is well worth it. Uh, the image quality is stunning for a small, compact size camera. Um, the video format that it shoots is absolutely amazing. One of the cons on the other side is, uh, as I said, the price. Uh, the price is, is quite high uh, compared to the, the other models and also uh, you need an underwater housing for this one. Uh, if you are on a budget, but not so much, and you want something you can evolve with, the RX100 series is, I think, by far the, the best one here. Uh, the TG series, um, let's talk a little bit about the Olympus TG. So Olympus doesn't really exist anymore for their camera business as they sold it to OM Systems. It's not really well known if they are gonna continue this series, uh, but I'm gonna assume that they do. Um, the, the TG series are tough. They are well known for underwater photography because those cameras are by default waterproof. 
and that makes you having an advantage here. Uh, first, because you, if you don't have the budget for housing immediately, you can already use the features on the water. Uh, I think it's up to 10 meter, uh, so it's not that deep. Uh, so be super careful with that. But you already can start to take it for like a snorkeling session or a, bit, a little bit of free diving. You don't need you don't risk to blow the camera. Uh, the macro capability of this camera are absolutely amazing. Uh, it's a well-used camera, especially by marine biologists, as um, there is a super macro mode inside of it that permits to go extremely close uh, and you can have those features without having to invest into a macro lens or into diopters um, and yeah it's, it's built in it's amazing on the con side I, I think the image quality is like the worst of the tree um, I mean don't get me wrong it's still amazing but if you compare the image of an Eryx 100 and the image of a TG5 as an example you can clearly see the difference and this is where it lacks a little bit for me. Let's talk now about the J7X. Um, the J7X is, um, is a series from Canon. Uh, I think, I mean, I really like the colors that Canon camera produce uh, on the water. I think those are amongst the best or even the best color. Uh, image quality is basically extremely close to um, to the Eryx 100 series. So like, you can't really choose them based on image quality solely. Um, if you, I would say, are more into photography, uh, I would say the J7X is maybe a bit better. Um, if you are more into video or plan to do videos, I would say that the RX100 is better. Uh, they are both amazing camera. You might want to change lens, uh, depending of, on what um, the situation is and what you plan to do on the dive. This is where I think the, the A6000 series is great. Those are camera with interchangeable lenses. So you can basically put the lens in front of the camera, in front of the sensor, um, for the purpose you want. The inconvenient of that means that the camera is bigger, and therefore the lens is also bigger, and you have overall uh, a bigger footprint in the water. Uh, which isn't something you might want to. The A6000 series is also really, really great for videos. Um, 4K video, um, like lots of lots and lots of features and options, log format, um, like it is a great, great camera for video. And um, the GH5 is an amazing camera, especially if you're looking into video. Uh, this camera has been used on cinema sets, uh, has been used uh, to shoot fit, like documentary uh, and this is actually the camera you are seeing the image right now. So all of the pictures you have seen before were shot with this micro four third. Um, the great thing with the GH5 is that your um, lenses are smaller, therefore your housing is a little bit smaller, even if the camera itself is actually quite big. Um, and it is a really big video powerhouse, so you can shoot 4K, 60 frames per second uh, at 4 to 0, 8 bits, or even uh, full HD, 120 FPS, 4 to 2, 10 bits. I mean, I mean, the colors are absolutely incredible, and this is what I love the most in the remix time. So A7S, especially the new A7S3, uh, great camera, um, absolutely amazing on the water. I could also recommend the A7 IV, the A7 R4 and R5. Uh, their colors are absolutely stunning. Um, Sony had a shift in their color science um, and this shift made underwater photography and videography especially amazing. And there is absolutely no noise, especially ex at extremely high ISO that makes it really great camera for exploring wrecks or deep diving. Um, can't recommend uh, enough. Moving on to the Canon. Uh, amazing image quality. Uh, the color science of Canon, and, uh, especially in those blue-green uh, cyan tones, I still do think that they have the edge of Sony, even if Sony has long, gone a long way. Canon, that's it. there is that little oomph, if I can, if I can say it like this, that makes the, the Canon camera uh, really special. Unfortunately, Unless you plan only to use the, the photo mode, I would not recommend it for video due to overheating issues. And this is especially true on the water, as we are 
taking those camera and putting them in a big box. Once you have considered all of this, you should already have a pretty good idea of what you want to invest into. But look online for example of the setup you would like to buy and read review of other underwater photographer I put them. Okay, well this is everything for today. I really hope that this video helped you in your search for the perfect underwater camera. Happy shooting and have fun!